And you know, now one time has it ever crossed my mind that Kid Capri had a real name? That's crazy, right? Said, I was born with Kid Capri. Huh? Yeah, like, a lot of people think that. <laughs> <laughs> real shit. I thought your name was Dave, <laughs> Dave Love. David Love. David Anthony Love. Me, my father's David Love, my grandfather's David Love, and my daughter's Davina Love. Get the hell out of here. Davina Love. Davina <laughs> Morty Love. Morty. I got Morty on my. Yeah, middle name is Morty. Davina Love Love. What's happening? It's the world's greatest Kid Capri, top tier affiliate CEO, and this is thisis50.com, and you are part of history. All right? No kidding. Kid Capri! Step to this, your good is gone. Where it's born, I leave mics torn when I put it on. So put it on, big L, put it on. Come on, put it on, and on, and on. Come on, put it on, big L, put it on. Who is Kid Capri, man? Where you from, dog? I was born in Brooklyn, raised in the Bronx. Raising BX. You Puerto Rican man? Not at all. Not at all. Uh, you just regular light skin. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm black and half Italian. It's a singing Italian. Oh, shit. I just saw it just now. <laughs> yeah, you man. just said that. Yeah. So you're half and half Italian. Hey, Bazan. Yeah, it's a singing Italian. My mom used to sing it, you know. I've been raised around blacks all my life. It's my life. You know, my dad's a big black my grandfather played trumpet for Dizzy Gillespie, Count Basie, and Miles Davis. My, my father made soul records in the 60s and the 70s. And um, I started DJing when I was eight. And I was the only one that was a little kid on the block around all the big dudes around the neighborhood that was the big DJs. And, and I, my moms had bought me a mixer that had no headphone holes, so I had to guess all the spots on the records. And that's what made me better than everybody else, because everybody else had the headphones to help them, and I did. Mm. And so when the young older dudes seen how good I was, you know, they was tripping on how good I was doing being this little. And um, everybody else, it was maybe 31, 32 DJs around my neighborhood. Everybody else quit and I kept going. And a girl named Olga Carter that, that was with us in the early days, she said Kid Capri sang a good name for a DJ. She tried it. And but, the, just, she just brought Kid Capri out of nowhere. Yeah, we was, on, we, was going, we was going to class. We was in sixth grade as a matter of fact. We was going to class. We sixth grade? Yeah, we was online. We was online, going to class, and my name was DJ Dr. Spank at the time. It was, <laughs> what? <laughs> DJ Dr. Spank. So she said, Kid Capri sounds like a good name for a DJ. Oh, wow. We should try it. Next thing you know, I did it, <laughs> and I was out. She was killed, though. She was uh, she was shot by a straight bullet. Get the hell out Not of here. Not long after that. Yeah, yeah. So, New York yeah. shit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Wow. Yeah. Man, first I want to start off by saying I, um, I apologize. What? You know, it, uh, I, I just thought, just because I'm a comedian, mm -hmm. right? <laughs> I just thought you had got popping off a Def Comedy Jam, man. Nah. Hey, yo, well, that thing. That's how I got the Def Comedy Jam. I was Word. already popping. Word. Yeah, I got hot in the street. The mixtapes uh, blew up. They um got real crazy. And then I got my first album deal. And I got my first radio deal and the first tour. And the first tour, at the same time I got my first tour, it was the same time I got the radio deal. And it was the first time I couldn't be there for the radio live because I was on the tour. And it was the first time they ever took my street mixtapes and put them on the radio. You got somebody to edit all the curses out and put them on the radio, so that was the first time that ever happened. And when I got off the tour is when I started. Then from there, it grew and grew, and I did a show somewhere, and Russell came to the show and seen me tearing the spot down, seen this crowd going crazy, and asked me what I thought about being with a comedy show. And that was history from there on. Get out of here. Mm -hmm. Now, you always hear about in New York, it's always somebody like maybe Chuck Chill Out put on Funkmaster Flex. Mm -hmm. Who was the guy that put you on? Uh, Nobody. I put myself on. Nobody gave me nothing. I sat on that street corner, you know what I'm saying? I didn't know if I was gonna get robbed, shot at, or whatever. But I sat on that street corner selling them tapes in front of Rucker, in front of 145th and, uh, and um, Willie Burgers and 145th and 8th. And everything was going on every day that I was there. He was getting stuck up, accidents, <laughs> shot at. <laughs> you know what I mean? But I was right there. I was determined to be somebody. So I said, you know, fuck it, I'm gonna do it, man. Um, and it blew up. I didn't even expect it to blow as, quick, as much as it did. I thought it was just gonna be like a neighborhood thing, you know, a little something to get in, but it went worldwide and it just took me to the point where they were saying I was making millions of dollars off a of, uh, mixtape. I had to stop because of that. <laughs> people were buying houses off my joints, but I wasn't seeing that money, so. Yeah, but now when you say that people were starting to get on and whatnot, and then you had tapped out of the game because you, you wasn't really seeing the same shit that they were seeing from it. Yeah. Like, is that because somebody else is in your ear like, yo, man, yo, yo, it shouldn't really be like this and da da da. Nah, nah, nah. What happened was after they got after they got crazy, I started seeing people buying houses off of selling my mixtapes. You know, I had got my off deal selling them. off the selling the mixtapes. Like, gotcha. they, I would just make it, right? And they'll come and copy them and sell them to whoever they sell them to and made their money. I, I wasn't seeing that, but I went in um, my record company one day. 
And the lady Starlight showed me these magazines that said Kid Capri, the only person in the world to make millions of dollars off of street mixtapes. When I seen that, I said, nah, that's not good. And that's when I stopped it. Then right when I was about to stop was when doo was about to come out with a tape against me. And I got a chance to come out before he did, brought one out, and that was my last mixtape. Wow. At that time, I did another one in 2010, maybe 10 years later. Mm. Yeah, but at that time, that was it. And once I did that, down on Def Comedy Jam, and then my whole career went to a whole nother level. It went somewhere else, and that was the beginning of the first superstar DJ. When did you know that you was like, yo, this Def Comedy Jam got me like looking crazy all over the fucking world and shit. Where were you at? Do you well, remember? Yep. The first concert when we did, um, you know, Def Comedy Jam was on, on TV for 16 years, but it, it would come off the end and go back on and we'd come back and do new seasons. But when we first did the first tour concert and I'm standing backstage and the curtain was closed and when the curtain opened, how, the people were screaming like I was the biggest entertainer in the world. I didn't have no idea. I knew it was a big show, but I didn't know it was that big to where these people were screaming like I was one of the comedians. You know what I'm saying? And um, that's when I knew that that little five seconds of spurts that I was on that comedy jam meant a lot to people that really didn't care about DJs at, at, at that time. And um, when they got a chance to see me do the concert, then they really got a chance to see a real show and they really knew what Kick and Free was about. So besides Def Comedy Jam, I had my own lane. I created my own lane to let them know that when they come to, to this show, it's more than with just comedy. It's going to be a party and it's going to set the tone for everything else that's going to go on for the night. So it worked out and, it, and then we stayed on the road uh, eight years, nine years with that tour. And I was on 15, 20 different tours going back and forth. So it got crazy, but Def Comedy Jam was definitely the opener. It was the, it was the thing that put me in everybody's living room that didn't care about what we do. Now, um, you first meet Martin. Mm -hmm. Did you ever think that this guy was gonna be as big a star as he was? He was funny, man. He was destined to be big. That's why, see, the, the original Def Comedy Jam host was Robin Harris, and he passed away, and Martin was the next one up. But from the first season when Martin came, we knew that we had something big, we had something big, but I didn't see him that far yet going to where he went until we got to the third season. When we got to the third season, that's when I knew he had staying power. And then when he came to the point where it was time for him to leave, whatever him and Russell went through, when it was time for him to leave, I knew that it was just about to be a big deal for him. But I didn't know it was gonna be bad boys and you know stuff like that, but he definitely took it far. Now when you seen it, like the, the, the bad boys comedy and shit like that coming out, D saying, oh, look at this right here. And then, yo, why they didn't call me? No, because I didn't want to be known as the comedy DJ. I did what I did with Def Comedy Jam. I made history with that. Uh, for years, people used to ask me why I don't put a comedy tour out again. And um, right now, I'm in the process of, of thinking about wanting to do it. But um, for years, I, I, I decided not to do it because I was on, on the road with Def Comedy Jam. But I didn't want to be called the comedy DJ. I did Def Comedy Jam, but then for me to come on Kings of Comedy, it really didn't make no sense. It, uh, everybody that was on Kings of Comedy came from my show. Right, right. You see what I'm saying? So it was like, that was just a whole nother thing. And, it was, and to see that happen, that was, that was, that was beautiful. And, the, and the, the producer of the show, the one that was in charge of the show, uh, uh, Walter Latham, he used to have us on tour with Def Comedy Jam. So he was, he's been around. It wasn't like he just said came about. He's been around, so he knew exactly what the, what the uh, comedy business was about and that's why he picked the four that he picked but if it had they had called me to come and do it i don't know if i'd have did it i don't, I don't know i don't know it, it depends on how they would have what the presentation would have been it would have been a thing with uh the kings of comedy featuring kick capri then yeah it would have been a thing where it's kings of comedy i'm in the background no nah, i just i wouldn't have did that i got the wild style always been a foul child my guns go boom boom and your guns go out pound. i'm known to have a hottie open i keep the shotty smoking front and get half the bones in your body broken and when it comes to getting nookie i'm not a rookie i got girls that make that chick tony braxton look like whoopie I 